Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth. All I'm asking level to do is to be reasonable in making this demand, demanding the new minimum wage. Many state governors cannot pay 30,000 naira uh, as the minimum wage. And you're talking about, we're coming up with all these outlandish figures, uh, 600,000 and so on and so forth. But one question I keep asking is that we understand the military and their mindset of centralizing everything because in the military you have this pyramidal power structure. Somebody is on top, he says, move, you move. Everybody follows the same order. So when the military came, they couldn't understand the, the, the federal character where the regions were almost autonomous centers of power. So naturally, they started weakening the region. You won't see Agui, you won't see started it, and it continued to a point where everything is centralized. Why must Nigeria, as diverse as Nigeria is, as heterogeneous as Nigeria is, have one minimum wage? The cost of living in Lagos is extremely high when compared to, say, Jigawa or Bauchi State. And you're trying to step one minimum wage across Nigeria. So first of all, let's start decentralizing what the soldiers centralized. And one of them will be to decentralize the minimum wage. Can't uh, 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 we have a minimum wage that makes sense in Jigawa? And another minimum wage that makes sense in Lagos State, because in Lagos State, 30,000 Naira, most workers in Lagos, just their transportation eats up a good chunk of it. So you can say Lagos State, 80,000 minimum wage, and that might be reasonable. And then you say Nasarawa Zamfare as, as what else can be determined. 25,000 might make sense to them. I mean, I'm not being, uh, it's, not, it's not an expert's opinion. What I'm talking about is the diversity of minimum wage, allowing local circumstances, local realities to determine this minimum wage. But what is being thrown about now is just too comical. Nobody will pay you. 615,000 a month as minimum wage. But I am not in a position to know. I lack the expertise. I don't have the arcanes of economics, so I don't know. How best is the The issue is not about the Naira you pay people, it's more about the purchasing power of the Naira. So you, uh, 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 if you raise the minimum wage to 100,000 Naira, the inflation it will generate will just eat up the money. So we need some more sustainable, more responsible, more human-oriented uh, uh, human uh, uh, economic policies that will make our economy thrive. We have the resources. But we lack the leadership. We, it's easy that have all the expertise they need. The system is teaming with managers. The system is teaming with experts. And a leader can have access to all these things. What a leader needs is vision. What a leader needs is courage. And then you can get experts to key into your vision. A man like Fashala, as governor of Lagos State, did an extremely good job with the traffic flow in Lagos. But his function is a lawyer. So he had to invite engineers, transportation planners, urban planners, architects to key into his vision. So let the federal government have the right vision. Let them be determined to make this country a better place, to utilize the enormous resources of this country and make it better for Nigerians to provide the uh, necessary environment for the economy to thrive and to Nigerians to live a decent life. The experts are there that will tell them what to do or can pro provide the necessary uh, expertise in doing what is necessary. Um, this, you see, Nigerians call about federalism, restructuring. And one mistake I think they make is to think that Federalism restructure will one day drop from above. Big and everywhere is restructured. It will not happen overnight. Uh, and in 
taking away the powers from the region started to happen quite slowly, continuously, the imperceptible gradations, but it wasn't one day. So we're talking about uh, state police. That would be a step in restructuring. Uh, physical federalism, another step in restructuring. But whatever can be done for the moment to make things work, to ease the burden on the long-suffering, patient, uh, 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 almost totally disenfranchised Nigerians should be done. The federal government and the state government meet routinely, I think it's once every month. The, the vice president presides over, uh, what do they call, council of uh, national economic council. So they can work these things out. They can discuss these things and work them out. The thing is to have the goodwill. The thing is to have the political will and the desire to make, uh, to ease life, make life easier for the common man. It can all be sorted out. What is special about May 1? Because it's, it's this Labor's Day. What is it? Labor Day. It's just another date, just like Christmas, come and go. Easter, come and go. Everybody will come and go. So nothing has to be pegged to everybody. It's not a special day. The thing is for people to go back to the drawing board, lay out, lay, 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 lay out, have a vision and walk towards this vision. So whether the minimum wage comes in two months, three months, but let it be relevant. Let it be let it make the system better. Let it improve the system and the lives of the people. Zebo, nobody takes Zebo seriously in Nigeria. Zebo lost its credibility. For one thing, we all know that Zebo has been compromised. Uh, I'm not being speculative. I'm talking with audacity. I'm talking with certainty. Because over the years, they've consistently disappointed Nigerians. They will threaten to go on strike and people will be ready, geared up for the strike. Uh, a few hours before the strike, they will call it off. It became a yo-yo game. We are going and people are ready to go. You call it off. So and nobody can believe that this is being done in good faith. They are being compromised. They've been repeatedly compromised that nobody takes them seriously. So labor is not really to me a force to be reckoned with. Nigerians must learn to protest. This is a democracy. There's freedom of speech. The jewel of democracy is freedom of speech, the ability to express yourself. So Nigerians must learn to verbalize their discontent. And um, in doing that, we may not wait for labor because labor can only dampen the spirit to protest. The spirit to speak out. So to me, Lebo has lost his credibility. Okay. What would you consider, since we're still practicing centralized wage, what would you consider to be an appropriate minimum wage? I answered your question already. I like the expertise. I don't have the economic uh, uh, facts, data, and I don't have the I lack the arcane of economics, so I cannot. It's very, it's very hard, and especially when you're talking about one minimum wage across Nigeria, it doesn't make sense. A man in Sokoto maybe can live off of twenty thousand. I'm just, I'm just, um, I don't have facts to that. But a man in Sokoto can can live doesn't need as much. His life is not as expensive. In Sokoto, as is, for example, in River State. Life is not as expensive as is in Jegawa and in Lagos. So break these things down. Let different states have different minimum wages. Great. Uh, I'm glad you've done that. The, some of our creating inclusion for those who are. Well, the thing is that if the government sets a minimum wage for government workers and corporate workers, it, it can be enforced. But in the informal sector, you cannot enforce the minimum wage. But then the government minimum wage sets the benchmark. 
I remember during the Udoji Award, then I was in secondary school. Salaries went from like, uh, uh, for some, 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 some workers, 40, so those with school sat education, that's level 04, went from like 40 something, 40 something Naira to 91 Naira, only for civil servants. But then with time, it became the benchmark, even in the private sector. The private sector might not pay you 91 Naira, but they can pay maybe 75. So everybody had to adjust. Even drivers started asking for their own Udoji award, and somehow they were accommodated. So, so if the government sent the benchmark, other um, employers will start kind of adjusting in response to this benchmark. Well, given, the, given how long it has taken for uh, the thing is, uses is on the part of the government. <laughs> Sincerity is very scarce in Nigeria. It's in those days I realized that um, nine out of 10 times when an American talks, he's telling the truth. Nine out of 10 times when a Nigerian talks, he's lying. So it's our national culture. Colin Powell once was talking about Nigeria. And he said, I don't understand why they steal so much and lie so much. Maybe it's their national coach. <laughs> Nigerians in the U.S. went after him. But I told him, the man is being honest. There are certain inherent uh, characteristics that we have that we cannot just escape. We might want to lie about it, but it's our reality. So I don't see the sincerity and honesty anywhere. If you see sincerity with the labor unions, do you see it in the House of Assembly? And uh, the, the, the Nigerian legislator earns more than the U.S. legislator. And the income per capita in the U.S. is 20 times that of Nigeria. So going by income per capita, the Nigerian legislator should earn one twentieth of what the American legislator earns. But he earns more. Is that not armed robbery under the veneer of legality? It's everybody is a crook. Everybody's trying concerned with self-preservation, click interest, reinforcing the status quo. So I don't see honesty on the part of the government. But then in most countries of the world, minimum wages are reviewed consistently as the cost of living changes, as inflation uh, inches is way up, is continually renewed, re reviewed minimum wage. But in Nigeria, it's like we have to argue about it, demonstrate about it, fight about it, fix one date, make one promise, breach the promise, and so on and so forth. But why would you not readily, consistently review uh, a, a minimum wage when the cost of living is not static? It keeps increasing. Since the 1973 Arab Israeli war, Inflation became a, major, became a major factor in world economics. Before, inflation wasn't, was not a, a major issue. And since then, these countries of the world, most countries of the world, have been reviewing their uh, minimum wages to keep up with cost of living. But in Nigeria, it's about fight, it's about argument, it's about one promise, another broken promise, and finally it comes. And when it comes, it seems unreasonable. Um, so that's the Nigerian factor. In some, in some states, in some cities, not everywhere. Where maybe in Bauchi State, 30 naira a, a, a month is substantial. In, in parts of the north, cost of living is quite low. Housing, food. And in some cities in Nigeria, civil servants, workers go to work without entering a bus. Yeah, your workplace can be half a mile away. There are some small cities where your workplace is one mile away. You don't need to enter the bus or taxi. So you talk about very low cost of transportation, low cost of housing, low cost of uh, feeding. Uh, so yeah, in some cases, in some cities, in some states, the minimum wages, the minimum wage does not make sense. In some in other parts of Nigeria, it makes a lot of sense.
Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.